I welcome you all for today's class. Uh, today we are going to see about the approach to febrile seizures and this is a very important topic not only for your examination purpose but also in a regular clinical practice definitely you will be seeing the patients with uh, febrile convulsions and definitely you should know in and about how to manage the child with the febrile seizures. So with that note moving on to the topic. So, by definition, febrile seizures are the seizures that occur between the ages of 6 and 16 months of age. That is mainly the peak at around 1 to 1 and a half. So, the peak age if you see it is between 1 year to 1 and a half years with the temperature of 38 degree centigrade that is 100 degree Fahrenheit or higher and they are not associated with any CNS infection or any metabolic imbalance and they occur in the absence of uh, the history of prior afebrile seizure. So, these four points definitely should be there to label the seizure episode as febrile seizures. That is the age group they should fall under this age group 6 months to 16 months and the temperature definitely should be more than 100. There should not be any underlying CNS pathology and there is no history of prior afebrile seizure. Then you call it as the febrile seizures. And how will you classify the febrile seizures? We classified into two types that is simple febrile seizure and complex febrile seizures. So, if you see in simple febrile seizures, they are generally there is seizure type will be GTCS that is generalized tonic clonic seizure and usually they last less than 15 minutes. So, less than 15 minutes only the seizure episode will last and they do not recur within the 24 hours. So, these three criteria you have to, uh, it should, uh, this criteria should be fulfilled to call it as a simple febrile seizure. Whereas, uh, in the other way, where, whether it is a complex febrile seizure, uh, it is more focal. It is more focal, the seizure type is more focal and definitely it is more than 15 minute duration and they recur within 24 hours. So, these three things, then it is come under complex febrile seizure. Any seizure, that lasts for more than 30 minutes, then you consider it as a status epilepticus. So, febrile seizures lasting more than 30 minutes, then it is febrile status epilepticus. And uh, one more terminology you should uh, know is febrile infection related or refractory epilepsy that is fires. Febrile infection related refractory epilepsy. It is actually a completely different disorder which is present in the older children and usually male male predominance is there ok. So, more commonly male predominance and more than 5 years are commonly affected associated with the encephalitis like illness but without any identifiable infectious agent. So, children with this fires that is febrile infection related epilepsy they were previously normal but uh, subsequently they develop uh, the difficult to treat epilepsy they fall under this difficult to treat category. This uh, thing you need to know about uh, this febrile infection related epilepsy. So, these are all the four terminologies that is simple febrile seizure, complex febrile seizure, febrile status epilepticus and fires. Okay. Moving on to why you need to differentiate and why you have to classify uh, like this and all. It uh, plays a very important role in predicting the future risk. So, why you need to classify the seizures at a simple and complex and all? There is uh, to predict the risk of the recurrence of the seizure. That is, if you see the uh, major risk factors like age uh, less than 1 year or uh, the seizure occurring within 24 hours and um, whether when the temperature is uh, like more than 100 degree Fahrenheit uh, with a family history of febrile seizures or family history of epilepsy um, or complex febrile seizure. Uh, particularly male category and uh, lower serum sodium at the time of presentation. So, these are all the risk factors uh, which is uh, like uh, uh, causes for the recurrent uh, febrile episodes of seizures. Like for example, if there is no risk factor at all, but the child developed one episode of febrile seizure means uh, that child has 12 percent chance of getting another febrile episode of seizures, another febrile seizure. And if uh, the risk factors, when the number of risk factors increases, then the percentage of recurrence also increases. So, this is actually needed 
in case of parental counseling like uh, for example parents may ask whether my child will get uh, the similar episodes in future so at that time this may be helpful for you to counsel the parents regarding the risk of recurrence of febrile seizures so coming to the risk factor and the associated subsequent epilepsy that is the child turning into a simple uh, febrile seizure child uh, may end up with a child with epilepsy if you see in that category a simple febrile seizure definitely very meager risk that is only 1% the child may develop subsequent epilepsy whereas if you see uh, the child with a complex febrile seizures that two focal complex febrile seizure means if you see the risk of subsequent epilepsy is almost 29% whereas 1% in simple febrile but whether when it is complex febrile the two focal seizure means the risk of uh, turning into epilepsy is 29% so that's why the classification and the type of febrile seizure is very important so coming to the genetic factors that leads to the febrile seizures so if you see the genetic contribution to the febrile seizures is manifested by the positive family history of the febrile seizures 